What's going on, everybody? Welcome to THC Talk. Cheers. Been a little bit since I've done a video, but I'm going to get back on track. Got a couple little things to review. Got a uh, couple things to smoke. I'm going to show you. Busted out one of my old favorite... Uh, favorite tools here. I'll show you guys the uh, herb iron. It's pretty pretty sweet if you got a lot of keef. So I'll talk about these uh, cool little guys I got from Raw. The rolling paper guards. Um, they're called the Hydro Stone. And they look like uh, look like that. Either. Just a little, like, you know, silly little piece of clay. You could probably even, like, just set a focus here. <laughs> um, you could probably break off a piece of a clay pot and use these, but uh, yeah, they're awesome. We're going to talk a little bit about those guys and uh, take it back. So, without further ado, one more sip off the tape. We're gonna start dabbing. We're gonna start getting high on the mofo. Just dabbing off some shitty ass rods I got here. My press was acting up and gave me issues. Kind of blew this press. Weed wasn't as good as I thought for rods and earring, anyways. Um, so it is what it is, but I worked on my press a little today. The pump jack had gotten some air in it, I think. And, uh,. It was causing it to not be able to get full pressure. I don't know what, how quite it happened. Maybe when I set it up, I had the jack turned sideways or something. But, uh... Whoa. Play a little blues. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I got some air in the pump, and it, it wasn't working right. It, it had this hit, so it's like, you get to, like reaching approaching full pressure you would never get there you just pull down you never feel that resistance quite so much you get a little resistance and then you get a like this little hiss so uh that wasn't very cool um but uh yeah i i guess you can open the valve just do a couple blank knocks and knock the air bubbles down let the valve out in the back release the air She's working pretty good, so I might go down there today and press some more rosin. What we're looking at right now is uh, just some, some, you know, miscreants they had growing. <laughs> A little uh, test run of some seeds a buddy gave me. And uh, good smell, decent terps on it. Great. Great trichome development, but unfortunately, out of the three that I did, they, you know, all had some male flowers, pollen sacs come out on them. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, we're going to start off today with a dabola of some Critical Plus 2.0 rosin. Really nice nose on it. Flavor didn't quite come across you know all my weed got really dry I accidentally left it down there too long not even that it was that long just the humidity dropped um and so i had to rehydrate it ah, fuck with turps taste whatever still good though Oh, I love these uh, nectar collector units because a Q-tip will just fit right up in there, no problem. A lot of these stab straws, <coughs> paint to clean. <coughs> Ooh, that stock on that bastard. You know, I believe. <coughs> Actually, no. Yeah, that was 
not what we're dabbing. That was another one of those missed screens. Um, but today, what we're going to be smoking, I'll show you guys. It's a pretty cool little, uh, pretty cool little stuff. Oh, good too. <coughs> oh man, excuse me. Let you guys hear that a little better. Yes, I'll bring up a picture of what we're about to dab off of. I harvested my plants the other day. So I used a trim bin. And I got a bunch of bunch of trim. A bunch of keef. Yeah, a little picture I can show you guys. Um, so yeah, you can see right here, this is it, got another, uh, trash guy just came, I forgot to pull out my trash, that's swag, wait, let me blow this up, let's see. <laughs> Look at that. Well, it replaced my photo. I do not know how that happened, but pretty cool. So you guys can see right there. Um, that's hysterical. How nice this key feeds shit looks. So uh, this stuff on the lower. <laughs> this is so funny. I don't know why I did this. But so the stuff on the uh, bottom bottom right hand side is all like the key just straight out the bottom of the trim bin and the stuff on the uh, top left hand corner there is uh, is um, charis you know this is what comes off the scissors and your fingers when you're working on the buds and trimming them up I like to ball it up I toss it in here and inevitably it gets coated in some of this uh, keef but man, that charge is some nice smoke. And this this was such good keef, really high grade stuff. You know, the weed was pretty dry, so I think that's why a lot of it a lot of it fell down there. But uh there wasn't even many crystals on this stuff or anything. It was it was pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. But <laughs> there I am again. <coughs> so anyhow, we got some of that keef left here. A little pipe bowl here. I got this at the uh, Freedom Fest. I like this one because it's got a uh, it's got this square body to it, so uh, it doesn't ever roll around on you when you use it. Let's uh, get the blues done with because we're gonna smoke. So I'm gonna put in a little reggae for well, us. Wait for a second on that, but. Uh, yeah, so it's got the square base on it. Doesn't really ever roll around when you put it somewhere. I'll tell you what, I have really only smoked the headiest of the headiest out of this pipe. Not that it makes it any better in the long run, but it still tastes like resin when it gets dirty. But man, it's kind of cool. I feel like I can never smoke a drop of swag out of that. It's mostly just been like hash. Smoke some a little bowl of weed with some with some uh, turps on it or some diamonds and sauce and uh, ultra headies cola nug and grew and then pretty much lately it's just been a uh, just 
been a key fight, man. It turns into fucking hash. Basically. Basically a hash pipe. Alright, so. We got a nice little ball full of that stuff going on there. And now what we're going to use to smoke is this herb iron. This thing's great. This is like basically a little, uh, you know, like iron for soldering, really, is what it is. But uh, we're going to use it to do some sweet little dabs. I mean, some sweet little keef, keef pulls off the pipe hole. I don't know if you guys can see that it's, it's starting to glow nice and red there. Getting pretty hot. And then you can just vaporize it right up without even really uh, burning the bowl. Eventually it'll catch, but first sip a couple of hits, especially. Smoke on that. Huh? I don't know. Oh, it tastes good though. I didn't really get one. Whew, no, I did. I feel it. <laughs> it's like, that was pure vape. That was. I like a little more than that because you get more of the full spectrum. But man, yeah, I felt that. That was pure vape. This thing's awesome. They got a little glass bowl. I'll show you guys in a sec that you can really m measure your hits a little better. With. I'll show you what I mean. Hold on. Let me pull a good one off this stuff. So. really burn it. Just kind of melts it out. Whew. That was intense. Let me show you guys what they, uh, that shit looks like, though. Don't mind my blowing out whiteness. Yeah, so, you know, these are the, uh, the herb irons here. All sorts of colors. I think you can even get dual color, like red and green combined. Um, and then they got these cool little attachments you can get. They slide over the tip of it and uh, you basically hold it glass on glass. And the air comes through this little hole right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. It travels over the heating element and down and it's like right against the bowl. So it makes a really nice seal, really focused. You don't pull a lot of air so you can draw a little longer. Let it heat up really nice. I want to order one of these actually, to be honest with you. Um, the only thing I hate is it's the plug-in unit. I wish it was cordless. But, uh, yeah, so this, you know, you place it right on there and allows you to vape out. Vape out your shit really nice. Um, you can see somebody using it on a, uh, on a bong here, like that. And then you just put your herb in the, you know, you always get this really light cloud, but healthy. Here's the other thing they have that I really would like to get is a, uh, one of these bowls and it has a dip and you can see the this guy rests right in that cutout and so you know it's just easier to hold it you just hold it right up against there it kind of heats up the whole bowl and the air around it and uh, really vaporizes a little more effectively it is a little easier you get shaky hands or whatever you know it's hard to hold it there sometimes and it's got <laughs> this and it's got this little uh you know you can see this one's shaped small for for i don't think this is for flour i think it's honestly for hash because usually when you smoke a lot of hash you put a little screen in there so it doesn't just suck right through um but yeah this is a beautiful little setup i want to uh I want to get here. Um, oh yeah, here you can see. It looks like they got 
tobacco in there. This day and age, it's hysterical. They wouldn't just put marijuana in there, but uh, yeah, you can just hold it right like that. Um, it's got a thread, you know, on it, and I think that's how you screw on the uh, this piece right here it has a little screwer on her. But yeah, these are, these are great, great little company. Um, and if you do want to ever really ignite it, get a full, full spectrum and the flame and all, you just touch that little ceramic tip to your bowl and it'll, it'll burn it right up. Um, and it's uh, great. You know, you don't have to worry about the flint sparking off the lighter or shitty, uh, you know, metals, heavy metals and the butane and cheap butane. Um, you know, it's just, you don't have to buy it. It's like an electric lighter, dude. Fucking save, save the earth. But, uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. That's my first little gadget I'm talking about. Um, next thing, let me find this, uh, raw, what do they call these hydro stones? The raw hydro stones are, uh, great. Yeah, oh, Amazon. But this is the other thing. So they're cheap. You can see. I'll put I'll put a link down there. It's like six thirty for three of them. Totally worth it. Uh, yeah, here's the homeboy right here. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, you use these guys, and I, I wouldn't recommend them for just like a small little jar of weed. I would go for something like a a Bovada pack or. Um, one of the other brands there, I forget, but uh, they work great if you have a lot of weed. You soak it in a cup of water for a little bit, and then you pop it right in the uh, your tub of weed, whether you have it, bucket, whatever, um, and it'll it'll get pretty much the whole thing, probably around, I'd say, to around 55% humidity. I soak this thing for a day in a cup of water put it in there the next day. Um, he talks about it, this guy, this is the raw dude right here himself, and he talks about this in his little demo video, but they don't really say it anywhere else, that he likes to put it in a cellophane, cigarette cellophane. He's using a Bovada. I forget the name. I, I keep feeling bad I call it Bovada, but it's the other the other company, and I actually have a bunch because I like them too. Um, just... Uh, the boost yeah integra integra boost um these are these are great um there we go this is a 55 -er. um i actually like the 62 ideally because i feel like that works a little better when you're pressing rosin ordered these on accident that's fine but so uh you know you, you can open one of these up and these dry out. They get a little hard after a while when they're totally dry. But uh, what you do is basically you cut off the top of this and you soak have this soaked in water ready to go. You just open this up and you drop the pellet in here and leave the top open and then put that in your big tote of weed. Um, and what it does is it is it uh, they kind of are symbiotic there. This this will hydrate that. That will hydrate this. But since this has a charge of water in it, it'll really keep everything going and hydrate very well for a bit. Um, this thing won't just burn out on this big tote of weed, you know. Uh, so these things are great for that. If you do put it in without some kind of cellophane around it, you have to be careful, kind of move it around every so often because it'll be wet. And, and what it's leaning against will get wetter than everything else, and there's a chance of mold growing between the weed and this when there's no air circulating and it's, it's warm and wet. So what I did is the first day or two, I moved it around one day, I put it there one day, I moved it there. The next day, the third day, I put it on the bottom of the tote. I had stems and everything in there and it was really, really dry. So it wasn't too much of an issue. I knew it was going to suck it out, but and it did. But if your weed's in a little better shape and you're going to want to store it for a while, definitely put it in a cellophane like this. Just leave the top open. Don't worry that it's not like super air air exposed. It'll work great. Um, and you come back after, you know, it takes a little while. Probably could take a week or so to get like, you know, five ounces or so uh, 
from bone dry to perfect, but uh, it'll do it in about a week. I'd say you just leave it shut and leave that in there. So these are great. I was a little skeptical of these things. I didn't know how well they'd work, but I really like them. And I do feel good that it's a natural thing. I feel like it's just water and clay. These have like weird silica in it. They're great. I use them all the time. I don't worry about it, but still, you know, it's a chemical they make. Um, these are just all natural. If you want to save a buck, I realized this is really just pottery clay. If, if you have like a clay drip plate or even a pot you want to break and just make sure it's not sharp on the edges, you take a little piece of clay, soak it in water for a day or two, um, terracotta, I guess, whatever. And uh, it's the same thing. So, you know, if you want to do that, but these are pretty cool. They actually came in this in this uh, little matchbox container too. And I was wondering if you could put them in here and then put them in the tote. But I don't think that would work well. I think this thing might just end up dissolving a little bit. You get three for six bucks, it's two bucks a piece. Well worth it, even just to support rock because those guys are good guys. I hate smoking tubers. I do it once in a while, but I don't usually use their papers. The zigzag guy, but uh, I do like the company. They've kind of innovated, and uh, you know, they weren't afraid to do it. So I like them, and these are great. I'd recommend it any day of the week for guys that got big totes of weed that need to stay um, hydrated. Again, if you're just doing a little jar or something, just use one of these. It'll last. A wicked long time and to be honest with you you can kind of rehydrate those with like a wet if you put like one wet nug up against it in a jar of pretty dry weed it'll almost have the same effect it'll like hydrate into that the nug will get dry hydrating into the weed and then it'll all kind of even out and be perfect i've done that with uh you know halfway dry bud or like a little stem a fresh stem those are also great ways to uh, rehydrate your weed if you if you have them if you don't something like this i'd actually rather do a bunch of wet stems to rehydrate everything and that actually works pretty good especially if you got some big ones but uh if you don't something like this is great um yeah so that's about that let's uh play another tune and uh take another hit i hope you guys the audio is all right i'm kind of fucking with with how i record the audio uh in terms of inputs and shit like that so i didn't want to use the headset today um and I usually just record direct off the desktop for audio, but this is a little easier not putting it in another source, so I'm just micing it off my webcam mic. Probably sounds like shit, but we'll see. All right, I'm glowing. You're gonna take a big one. I might do a little touchy-touchy. dab all the time. And this heat gets me baked. Oof. It's wild. You like don't you're like uh, it's kinda like smoking a bowl but then like whoa Ooh, it gets <laughs> it gets yes. Well I'm still burning. Don't break the plate though. snow out right now. <coughs> I swear, I think we were like 60 yesterday afternoon. <coughs> then it started raining. Then it started snowing. It's fucking like 35 degrees out, dude. Planted all these flowers that came up. Just getting fucking snowed on like a motherfucker. But I love doing it. Plants flowers. I don't care. I like the early ones. I don't 
I like these. I, I gotta get more seasonal. I gotta get midsummer, late summer shit going on. All my shit, only like tulips and shit come up so early. People love it though. I always see them taking photos out front. It makes me feel a little proud. I saw a lady doing it today. I think she liked the. Uh, I got some some uh, um, daffodils that are already up already, and I got some uh, little crocuses that are already up already. And this is kind of like purple and, and yellow and in the snow. It looks real pretty. She's taking pictures up front. I'll show you guys at some point. But uh, let's get this guy off. We fucking put this guy on enough. We got our videos going in the background. We got our music going. I'm getting baked. Anybody out there in the stock market feel my pain lately? I've been feeling the pain. I'm trying to be a. A wonder, wonder kid. Bombs and buds, but this shit is like scary lately, dude. Scary lately. Anybody out there freestyle? My buddy John's been getting into rap a lot lately. I used to do it when I was like 18 a lot. Kind of having fun with him lately doing it. I can't write though. I'm not good with words on paper, but I freestyle with it. This has been fun. It's stupid, but like, it helps to have a creative outlet. Everybody needs to, whether it's sketching in a pad or writing poetry or singing or playing a guitar. It's very important. Growing weed even is a little bit, but like, it's not quite in the moment enough. I don't know how to put it, but something about being a little artistic expression. Dancing counts. Whew. Man, I am getting lit up. Let's mix it up. Let's hit into this. Uh... Whew. <laughs> to get a little ahead of myself. Pushing the tempo. Um, so, genetics, strains going in the tent. I'm rocking, uh, some subcool genetics, man. Subcool genetics. There's not a lot of subcool genetics around anymore. Fuck, dude. So, I got the hazy margarita clone I got from a boy of mine. I'm so eager to get it going, but it is sick. I mean, it was rough when I got it. It was one one foot in the door, death door. It had been in a a red cup for uh, ever, forever. It was like pretty big, and uh, it had gotten some thrip damage. So I I took it with the thrips, knowing. I got it quarantined. It's the only thing I actually have going right now. Got it in its own little tent. I'm cheating it with Azimax. I gotta get it brung back. And I don't even have good soil. It's in. I just ripped a plant out. Went blah 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 with my hand. Made a hole. Put the put the fucking plant right in there. There's so many roots in there and shit. But uh I think once I can get it to be established, I can get it to take. It's just going to be a mother. So once I get about 16 clones off of it, I think it's done. I'll try and butt it, I guess. But <coughs> I might not even. I might not even because this plant is like fugly, dude. I'll show you guys. I'll make a video of that plant and uh, show you what I'm up against with that thing. But uh, it's fugly effing ugly, you know, um, but I'm excited, Hazy Margarita is a really nice strain, um, maybe I can get a little imagery here and show you guys what it looks like, I don't know if any of you have ever been to Attitude Seed Bank, but that is a, uh, great little, uh, site, um, to get seeds anywhere in the world. Because I know it's hard to get them someplace, but these guys will will get them to you and don't sweat it. 
unless you're in like probation or something, then I don't recommend doing it because they're watching your ass. But uh, yeah, otherwise, good to go. Um, so I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with Subcool, but you probably are if you've ever grown weed. But he uh, passed away of, I think, tuberculosis or something like that. It's pretty sad. Um, last year, um, maybe the year before, I think it was before all the COVID shit went down, but, uh, and his genetics, you can see, man, all out of stock, everything's gone, everything's gone, but, uh, I was able to buy a couple, buy, I bought one pack before they sold out of, uh, of um afku overdrive and it uh okay yeah it's my own probably my own doing but like three of the seeds out of five sprouted two didn't sprout and then out of those three fucking uh what happened i think I think I got all males out of those three. I think every fucking one of them was a male. I didn't get one female. And uh, so I took one of the males and I crossed it with a Chaco Lopez from Blim Blurm Seeds. And uh, I got that. So it's half, half, half Google Overdrive, half Subcool Genetics. My buddy's got some Hazy Margarita Eager. That's who I got this clone from. That's what I'm going to show you now. So... I got that, and I'm going to clone it up and give it to some people. Um, here we go, right here. I'm going to clone it up and give it to some people. Let's see if I can move my camera for a minute for you. So this is it right here. Um, I mean, this isn't the best... Uh, the best picture. We'll see if we can't get a, a, a better, a better picture somewhere. But uh, it's pretty nice. This is a cross of uh, Mr. Nice female mango haze with a strong mango aroma and hazy high and the uh, JTR, which is um, Jack the Ripper, killer lemon lime terps coats everything in resin. Sounds great, because that's what I do. I press the raws. You can see right here, Mango Haze times Jack the Ripper. Sativa, 80%. Indica, 20%. Indoor, outdoor. It's a long, long haul. Uh, 70 days for sure is when I do it. Heavy yielder. Long dense bushes with triangular shaped spears. It is a very lanky, lanky plant, so it would probably do good to topper, scrogger, I don't know, something like that to control it. But, uh, can't wait to do it. So yeah, Mango Haze times Jack the Ripper, Subcool's the finest, always triked out hard shit with Subby. Um, and so I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, breed this one with the Chaco Lopez times Afku Overdrive that I made back cross them once or twice so it'll be really heavy on the on the subcool genetics in there it'll be hazy times Afku times Chaco Lopez but it'll be you know 80% subby genetics by then um, so that should be cool and I don't know We'll do that, something like that. Um, and uh, I can't wait to try this. So you guys will be seeing me do a little. I'm gonna do a whole, whole run of just, just this strain, kind of, you know, the last hoorah for uh, Subby, um, cause this will be the last pure subcool strain. I think I'm gonna get my hands on. My buddy might have a couple more going, but I'm not sure. And. Uh, He's got a parrot and shit, so I just want to use like any insectus. I don't know. He's, he's out of out of control with it, but uh, he buys ladybugs to keep them in track. But it's always a little shit, so I don't often take clones from him. But he's got the best shit. What can I say? So I took this one, 
and uh, it's got thripes on it. So I'll deal with it and we'll rock and roll. I'll let you guys know how it goes. And then after this, I'm gonna get on that uh, Gorilla Skittles again, because that was awesome. So I'll have them right back to back. I'm gonna try and sneak them in real close, get them both done before next winter and take the winter off. Um, all right, guys, I hope everybody's doing great. And I hope you're all staying high, healthy, happy. Uh, an empty pipe is a uh, sad pipe. So back to bong. Get your ass high, happy, and watch a couple more episodes.